Okay, it's time to have a look at the cooling system on our old TEA20. And for those who watched me disassemble the tractor, you'll know that I just pulled this water pump and the water pump manifold and all off in one hit. And I thought, oh, well, we'll, look, we'll deal with that later. So now's that time. <laughs> so I might just pan out a little bit if I can, just to give you a bit more room. We've got a good light here, but good light gives us shadows. So there's a couple of things we need to look at here. Now, if we look at the um, fan blades here, they're all bent up and all crappy looking. Um, I'm not going to replace this. I'm going to um, just take that out onto the anvil. And we're going to try and get it a nice smooth curve around if we can. Um, there's no cracks or anything around through here. So if there's any cracks, anything breaking, if you can look on the underside there and see any cracks or marks or anything like that, it's time to chuck it for safety's sake. But look, I, I don't know what's happened here. It's got a big bend. I think you can see that. Um, a big bend here. And so <laughs> she's had a wild old time. So. This housing here that mounts the water pump, that bolts onto the front of the block and this is our drain, a little brass um, drain tap. Um, we have the, the hose that I must have not taken off because it was in the road or too hard or something like that. So we may just loosen that off now and get him out of the road. And we'll just run through pulling the water pump off here and what we're gonna have a look for and a few things like that and then when we assemble the water pump um, oh come off you big bugger <laughs> look at all that junk in there isn't that just beautiful the um when we assemble it we'll actually assemble piece by piece on the tractor now there's your bypass hose outlet it's <laughs> it's just about all blocked up but Look, we'll just pop this apart here on the bench, just so we're trying... I'm trying not to miss anything out on the video. So we'll... Just undo this. Now the fan has a trapezoid bolt pattern. Now a trapezoid means there's four bolts, but they're not in a square pattern at all. Um, and the reason for that is in under the pulley here, there's a cotter pin, like on, a, like on the old push bikes. So, um, yeah, just, they had to make room for it. In these jobs, I do a lot of replacing split washers or spring washers. See, that's got quite a large gap in it. quite a large gap and it's stretched apart so it's, it's all right to use the bolts if the bolts are fine like they're they're good no worries but those split washers or the spring washers um, if they're dicky they're just no good they'll they can split on you and make things go loose now an interesting thing I was service manager for John Deere and John Deere tractors were my repairs and that were my bread and butter for a long time and a lot of the John Deere stuff, they did away with split washers. And we went to service training one time and I was having a talk to Peter. And I asked him about it and he said, yeah, it was something to do with warranty claims. They reckon a lot of warranty claims are from failure of split washers. When you use the right hardeners, or the right, um, the right hardeners, right um, um, fasteners, and they were tensioned correctly, the need for split washers wasn't there. So they, they decided not to do that. That's an interesting little bit of bullshit, yeah. And there we go. So there's our beat up looking old fan. But by the next time you see that, hopefully, I've had a chance to do a bit of panel beating on it. 
and it won't look so bad. Well, let's hope not anyway. Now, the pulley just sits down over top like the fan does. And we should be able to pop that off. Give me some wiggle room. There we go. So that's your pulley, we'll clean all that up. There's nothing wrong with that that I can see. Looks okay, we'll clean all this rubbish out of here of course, but look, that's, that's certainly usable. Now with the, the drive hub on the pump, you can see the little cotter pin in here. And this has the cotter pin, some of them have a key as well. Um, but the shaft has a flat for that to go on. Um, I'm not stripping this water pump apart. Um, I like to use the Sparex. Um, my preferred one always is the S43576. And the reason I like the S43576 pump is that it comes with the new flange. It comes with the new flange already. Um, now, you'll notice that that's down, that's down rubbing on the housing there. That's just where it was in transport. So you can oh, that might need loosening back a bit. But you move him so that's just clearing, and then nip that up again. Um, and this nut here and the washer is just a safety nut so if this fails or something like that it'll probably spin around and and not come off and and do anything and any damage now one thing i noticed with these pumps is the old ones always have a grease nipple on them um, for greasing and i always thought that was a good idea you know but what the story was with that was the bearings inside were open bearings. Yeah, they might have a tin shield one side, but they were open. And um, by putting a bit of grease in, you could, you could keep it lubed and keep it going. So with the new pumps, the new pumps have um, plastic or sealed bearings in them that you can't grease anyway. So there's no real need to have a grease nipple there. Now, for those that say they're going to last longer with a grease nipple, um, have a look at your car, your modern vehicles nowadays, um, your fan belt tensioners and all that on your modern vehicles. They have one or two, just 6203 bearings that are sealed. And look, they'll do 50 to 100,000 kilometres, miles, no worries at all. So, um, boy removing the grease nipple and, and, and replacing the bearings in the pumps with the better quality bearings, look, at, it's probably fine, you know. Um, you can see that they've got a little telltale down here where all the, um, where any water leaking through past your water pump seal comes out. The old one has got a nice long one there. The new one just has a little drain hole here. Um, the old pump has a two-piece seal. The new pump has a modern cassette-type seal, like in all your cars. So uh, it's just upgrading, it and it's, it's probably cheaper for them to upgrade than do the other. Oh, and look, everything about the aftermarket parts thing, it's, it's about price and quality and, and all that sort of thing. <laughs> they've, they've, they're there to make money. So am I. So um, they, they work out what's best for their situation. So the little hole here, if you over greased it too, the grease had come out there sometimes. But, um, but we'll just get this water pump off here. Hear the birds in the background this morning. It's early morning. We need that bolt. So that component 
I'm not pulling it apart this time. No need, just wasting time. I waste enough of that. <laughs> and this housing here, um, our, our water outlet, I'm going to give that a bath. Um, I wonder... Uh, 7 16th. I've got my 7 16th adjustable spanner here. I'll just see if it wants to come. If it doesn't, looks like it's had a bit of a bend in the past sometime, so we can probably straighten that a little. No, I'm not going to push that. You can see the bits of rust and all the all the rubbish that's just coming out of that housing all this here so look i'm gonna um sandblast inside here not going to paint it with anything no need i'll clean all the gaskets and that up and the next time you see this i'll have it in my hot little hand here and we'll be sitting it on the front of the engine but it, hopefully it's a bit clean and i'll i'll tidy up all the bolts and you know clean the threads and replace the spring washers and all that sort of thing, get it ready to pop back on and we'll go through the whole assembly, you know, putting the water pump on, setting the fan and all that sort of thing, so. Okay, look, just as a bit of an add-on to this video, I've been over, I've sandblasted the front surface here that the fan goes on and where it sits down over onto the water pump here, so that sits on nicely there. Um, I cleaned inside of that as well, so you can see the surface down in the guts there that bolts flat on here, that's nice and flat. The fan, whoop, the fan I panel beated and I've got a nice bit of shape there, hopefully. Um, it's not too bad. I can hear an aeroplane in the background, you might be able to hear that too. Um, so it's just a bit of a, a bit of a tidy up. The fan's looking good. Um, like I say, no cracks, nothing like that. And on the main housing here, um, I've sandblasted all inside through here, all up in the housings and everywhere I could go. Um, look, it, it's pitted along here a little bit. Now, with a new hose, that's not going to worry you. The hose will come down over here and you have quite a bit of length here. So even where that angle is there, if you decided to cut that off, you know, drop that back a quarter of an inch, the hose would come up here further, the bottom radiator hose. Um, there's plenty of room for that. If Look, if you want to do that. But look, it's, I don't believe it's necessary. You'll have plenty up here. Um, when you put the hose on, um, if you put the, say you put the hose on right up there and you put the clamp right up here, well, that lets all the coolant get down onto the hose here, or onto this snout. and often rots them out but if you have the hose on there and the clamp right down this end well it seals off the coolant or the water or whatever you have in there at the time it seals that off from coming up there and rusting it so I would say when we look at this one we could probably go back and look at the footage but when we looked at this one I wouldn't mind betting that the hose clamp was about there maybe maybe not but um, usually I try and bring the hose clamp look about five mil from the end there and that seals up this main snout and this fella here that seals them up from the coolant or in this case from the mud and the slop so look that's clean that's good enough um, we'll go and bolt this onto the tractor now bolt it onto the front um, the one thing I was going to cover with you was the the drain See, the, the housings on the old stuff are just a little bit nicer to me. You know, they're nice. These are, these are a little bit more robust, but um, I don't know. I just like the others. But um, When you put this on, the drain hole, like I, that's obviously the bottom, and the drain hole comes across here. That's no worries. If it's leaking out of there, it'll leak. If it's going to leak, it'll leak out of this hole anyway. And the other one had the big slot, so when you sat it in there... Um, you had the drain here and it would would have leaked out this side of the slot there probably so look it's neither here nor there um, if it gets to the stage where that seals leaking it'll certainly leak out that hole there so 
All right, next time you see these, we'll be over bolting them on.